Denise, thanks very much for joining me. Now, you've been working in healthcare and social media for quite a while. So how did you get into it and what are your objectives? Well, I came to healthcare and social media from my original interest and involvement in healthcare on the internet. That interest goes back to 1994 with the uh, eruption of the web when I attended a first meeting at Harvard uh, in the United States, came back to France and decided that a portion of my activity as a medical advertising agency would from then on be devoted to the internet um, and we scrambled to, to find the right people to start creating websites um, in Europe at the time. They were not common, we also had to do a lot of training. Over the years, this took me in different directions with respect to new technologies, whether e-health, telemedicine, <clears throat> the electronic medical record. Um, the electronic medical record and telemedicine are 50-year-old concepts. And um, as regards um, Health 2.0 and social media, um, these are things that people have been speaking about, I guess, ever since maybe 2000, the mid-2000s, 2004, 2005. Um, when the idea that there would be participatory medicine or contributions from the average uh, internet user. Um, and this has all just been uh, growing phenomenally. Now you've been heavily involved in the Health 2.0 and the Doctors 2.0 and U conferences. So tell me a little bit about what those are all about. Well, uh, the um, Health 2.0 movement um, has been around since around 2005 or 6 when the words first began to be used and uh, we felt that Europe was certainly not uh, ahead of the pack and that there would be a great excitement if this sort of conference could take place in Europe and Paris is the largest destination in tourism around the world. So we were the host for the uh, Health 2.0 Europe 2010 conference, which was a big success. And then in 2011 launched the Doctors 2.0 and You concept to make sure that we were bringing to the forefront the physician perspective while still maintaining the patient and the other healthcare actors. And again, another tremendous success and there'll be a new one in 2012. And I think you've highlighted a really key point there, Denise, which is we talk about social media engagement as being two-way engagement, but actually within our field it should be three-way. We've got the, the pharma companies, the healthcare providers and the patients. So outside of these events, do you see much of that three-way discussion taking place? Well, is it all right if I go further and say that it's actually multiple way? Um, your um, publishing company or online publishing company is entitled Pharma Forum. So um, it's clear that the third partner to you is, is Pharma. But we also have, depending on the business model behind the health system, you have the government and the payers. Um, so that, yes, when it concerns a uh, particular issue, it may not be all of them at once right there online, but this is the whole um, both advantage and complication, I guess, of communication in the healthcare field, that you automatically almost have crowdsourcing because you've got all these diverging points of view that have to come to some sort of synthesis at a point. On the other hand, it makes it very complicated. Um, the situation that you specifically referred to where you would have a patient, a physician, and the pharma company um, might be more justified in, I guess, rare disease or um, diseases in which the treatment is, is extremely um, complex and perhaps costly, um, in, in which case you might want to have that conversation before establishing a new treatment. Um, there's an issue with regulation as to how the pharmaceutical company can approach directly the patient, um, especially in Europe. So it's not so obvious whether it's in person or in any other form as to how pharma could be involved in this dialogue. In addition, um, the patient would possibly rightfully say, and so would the physician, in this really personal discussion between the physician and patient, nobody else should be present if we're talking about a particular case. 
Now, if it has to do with coming up with good ideas, um, uh, determining strategies of how to communicate or maybe even how to look for new drugs or what are the problems in administering the drug, then of course you want to involve everybody. There are certainly some examples in certain countries where you would have um, a government platform for the um, physician and patient. I can uh, give the example of Denmark um, has a national portal where there is a profession, healthcare professional entrance and there is a patient entrance. Um, the patient would be able to make comments and above all access all of their information. Um, the physicians would find uh, also access to the patient information and many, many important um, things for, for them that they would need all day long. Um, you have as well, um, for example, a, a payer in Israel um, who spoke at the conference where in the night a worried parent can, through the web portal, be in contact with their child at their side with um, a pediatrician to ask whether there is need to go to the emergency room. Um, they have a, provided a webcam and a reliable digital thermometer so the parent can say this child has such and such temperature and they've also provided them with a, an otoscope, so an ear measurement device that looks just like the one you would see in the, in the doctor's office that the um, parent can just place by the ear and it's connected, I guess, by Wi-Fi to, um, to the other end and the um, pediatrician can tell the parent whether or not there's a need to go to the emergency room uh, through these few pointers, uh, through, through pieces of, of information. Um, so there you have um, some interesting dialogue that's going on. I've got to ask you about regulations because you, you touched on the point of regulations and we operate within a regulated environment when you were talking previously. Do you think regulations is a major factor that's holding back use of social media within the healthcare space or is it just one of a number of factors which are at play here? It is certainly the number one factor mentioned by people as to whether what is stopping them and I'm going to give you the two examples. You have regulation on the healthcare professional side. Um, they will be concerned as to whether what they um, may say ha what will result in their having a responsibility they weren't expecting to have, what they may put into writing rather than what they say, the, the traceability of it. Some, depending on the country, may be concerned that appearing in social media will be perceived as excessive advertising um, as a healthcare professional, which will be disliked either by their peers or by the, a regulatory organization. So you have those two points. Thirdly, they're concerned that it will open them up to too great a solicitation, a patient load that they can't handle or that it doesn't make sense for them to embark upon if they're not going to be really their patient. Um, and encroaching on their free time to be able to be identified as being online and to be asked a question whenever they... I mean, this, this would be the myth that they would imagine. On the industry side, the regulatory concern is that now governmental bodies have linked um, communication regulations and reimbursement or marketing authorizations, being able to be on the market that if you're not a good policeman about your own communications presence, then you can have re negative repercussions on your reimbursement or on your marketing. Um, there are also major issues with regulation for industry in terms, again, of the quantity of work that this would lead to, as many regulators do not, um, have not left their old way of asking for paper copies or duplicates um, or for action in requesting authorization before the dialogue takes place, which is almost impossible. 
So um, uh, regulation um, is indeed an issue, a genuine issue, and not just one that has been made up. But there's another point or, or two to be made about the fact that many senior decision makers in industry have not reached the point where they're convinced that trying to find solutions to the regulation is really worth it because either they haven't personally identified the value of such a service or dialogue, whatever we're talking about, or they haven't seen the value that it could translate into commercially because there are really two cycles. There's the sales cycle where that company may be judged internally, I don't know, every quarter or every six months on how they're doing versus social media bringing um, to fruition better relationships which will occur over the years. And this is a problem in our society at large where we have seen um, an expression was made, I heard this the other day at a conference, I thought it was a good term, that we have left entrepreneurial capitalism for financial capitalism, that everything is determined by the markets and they're being defined every second, every minute, but on return on investment. And we're going further and further away from producing things and doing things uh, for their own value. To some extent, part of the challenge I see is that it's very easy to do things on the social web. It's very easy to set up a Facebook page or do a website or any of those activities. It doesn't mean that pharma should be doing them. So where do you see the value? In what areas do you see the value for pharma actually engaging online? If I had the opportunity to address a number of senior management committees within the pharmaceutical industry, some of whom I assume are involved in Pharma Forum and reading it or participating, I would really want to underline the fact that the environment outside of the company has tremendously changed within the communication sphere. That where the pharma company had the possibility of being the almost the sole contributor of information in in many contexts, um, this is no longer the case. And that now the average healthcare professional will go much faster in finding information on their own than in trying to contact a company to find things out. Um, that the, the various areas such as um, understanding what's happening with their products um, that may have been the realm of pure research before can now be understood through communities, uh, that medical congresses where only the happy few could attend now, tweets are zapping around all over and um, people, are, people are involved as never before. And that it seems to me that it would be urgent for pharma companies to train various levels of their management to be fully aware of the opportunities because the world of social media is getting more and more complex every day as services come on and others disappear. And the longer people wait to understand what's going on to get involved, the harder it is to sort of jump on the horse and ride, ride off with it. We've seen already that where pharma has engaged through social media, it's often been met with some resistance. Um, there's been some voices of anger out there lashing out at pharma. So how does pharma deal with this and how does it restore trust and deal with some of this negative PR that it's experiencing? I love your question. Uh, let me point out something first of all because it's true that pharma often feels that they are being particularly targeted and maybe in certain issues they are. However, backlash regarding corporate misuse of communication is not limited to pharma because in fact the first example that I have in mind was one concerning L'Oreal, who a number of years ago had come up with, maybe through the help of an outside agency, with the idea of creating a blog where when you would read it, you would think it was a person, but it wasn't a real person, and this person just loved every L'Oreal product. And so the readers or participants in this blog became very annoyed when they realized what was really happening, 
However, there's a happy ending to the story, which is that L'Oreal apologized and everything went well. They, they took that away and did other things, and uh, I think that L'Oreal now is, uh, is much further along in the use of, of social media as a valued member of the, the online community. And the same would be true for pharma. You have a problem, well, you come out and say that you're sorry, and uh, just like amongst any human, in any human relationship, when I think it's perfect, you, you go on from there stronger for having realized uh, what, you, what you did wrong. Um, what I would say is the real issue, though, is that if you come to this 2.0 and social media, the second generation of communication, with a first generation approach, the first generation approach was in a way mimicked by the web in the sense that it was one way. You put out a website, and even if you took email uh, published them necessarily and people didn't expect it to be published. So um, I think that the way to get around this for the future is to begin with the idea that this is a dialogue and I may have a certain number of issues I want to be sure to discuss but I no longer have messages, one-way messages. I want to be in a conversation. The problem is that this runs head up uh, against what we were just talking about, which is the, the regulatory space. The regulatory space is not, for the moment, really giving pharma the possibility of being in a dialogue. What I see as a way out of this is to have individual managers from a pharma company holding dialogues because they know, they've been briefed, they know what the regulatory limits are. And if they go out on the web and say, I'm here to discuss such and such, and then somebody goes off the possibilities, then they'll say, well, I can't go any further on this for this reason. But um, I think that there is um, far too little communication between the people um, in pharma companies who understand their products and who know what research is going on and the outside world and that it would be beneficial for both. And of course, I'm not a regulatory specialist, so can't go too much further on that. Well, Denise, it's been great speaking with you, so thanks very much for your time. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.